that line tech show with Brian Fischler. That line tech show. Welcome back to that blind tech show. We're up to uh, episode five here, I believe, and uh, people are still asking. Where do we find that Blind Tech Show? So to get a little housework out of the way, I'm going to let you know. We're part of the Blind Abilities Network. So in your podcast player, just type in Blind Abilities. That way you'll get our shows as soon as they're released. Or if you're an iPhone user, you can download the Blind Abilities app, and that way we'll appear anytime our show's released. If you want to reach out to us, we're on Twitter at Blind Tech Show. And, of course, you can email us in that Blind Tech Show at gmail.com. We want to hear from you. We want to hear what you like, what you don't like, what you might want us to talk about, or if you have any questions, feel free to shoot us in an email or tweet us. This episode, though, I'd like to welcome in a a good friend of mine that almost all of you are going to know, Randy Rusnak. How you doing today, Randy? Well, I'm doing just fine. Thanks for having me, and I'm glad to be a part of this podcast. Number five we're up to already. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's too bad we couldn't have gotten you on before, but we're going in alphabetical order with guest hosts. I, I hope that uh, makes sense. We're all but, the way uh, up, to, up to ours already. <laughs> to ours, up to ours. I'm always so. at the tail end of everything, it seems. Yeah. Now, Randy, i, I got to ask you a question. Have you sure. ever been sued? <laughs> <laughs> I've been threatened, but never sued. Really? Okay. <laughs> I, you know, I've I've never been uh, amazingly, and I know you'll find this amazing. I've never been sued, and I've never sued anybody. Frivolous lawsuits just drive me absolutely bonkers. And anyway, the, this lawsuit, it just I, I I don't get it. You know, people need to take responsibility for their own actions. You know, what did you think of this? That a judge had to throw out a case of uh, Apple oh, yeah. being sued about texting and driving accidents, mm-hmm. that it was Apple's fault. Oh, yeah. And I think everybody at Apple, well, most everybody, except for the two people that I know, are cited, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, this is a kind of a crazy story because uh, the comment is, should you be texting while driving? Oh, you definitely shouldn't be texting while driving. Even I know that, and I haven't driven uh, since 1999. But, uh, yeah, the, the fact that uh, some people, I guess, they've lost a loved one or whatever, and they're suing Apple because Apple didn't have uh, this automobile mode. Supposedly, I guess Apple has something built into the operating system that would automatically shut down the phone uh, when in a car. Uh, As far as the texting, it would lock the screen and everything. But they haven't enabled it. There's a lot of rumors they might enable it uh, during iOS 11. Settings. Do not disturb. Do not disturb while driving. Heading. Activate. Manually. Button. Selected. Do not disturb. Back button. Automatically. When connected to car Bluetooth. Selected manually. Do not disturb while driving can be activated manually from control center. Do not disturb back button. Auto reply to favorites button. Auto reply. I'm driving with you not disturb while driving turned on. I'll see your message when I get to where I'm going button. Your favorites will receive this message when they text you and may break through to not disturb by sending urgent as an additional message. Limit notifications while driving. Incoming calls will be allowed when iPhone is connected to car Bluetooth or a hands free accessory. Learn more link. About do not disturb while driving do not disturb while driving can automatically detect that you might be driving and silences incoming notifications and keeps your iPhone screen dark. To keep you from waking your iPhone while you drive, notifications will not appear on the lock screen. You can configure a custom automatic reply and messages for a group of people you define, your favorites by default, so that you won't feel pressure to immediately answer text messages. They also have the ability to mark a message as urgent on the chance that the notification needs to be let through. Detection A Bluetooth connection to a car provides the clearest indication that you are in a vehicle. When iPhone connects with your car's hands-free system, do not disturb while driving will start automatically and will end when Bluetooth is disconnected. If your car does not have Bluetooth, iPhone uses other sources of information such as nearby Wi-Fi networks and the accelerometer to try to detect that you're in the car. This does not provide the same level of accuracy as a Bluetooth connection and may result in delays in starting or ending do not disturb while driving. In do not disturb settings you can choose to activate automatically only when connected to Bluetooth or manually. You can start the feature manually from control center before your drive. Since iPhone can only determine when you are in a vehicle and not whether you are a driver, there may be situations when do not disturb while driving still becomes active when you happen to be a passenger, riding a bus, or other such situation. If that is the case, you can unlock your iPhone by telling it you are not driving, and iPhone will remain out of do not disturb while driving until the end of the journey you are currently on. 
but it's not been ever fully enabled. And that's why these people feel Apple is responsible, which is ludicrous. People just stop texting while you're driving. I don't know what the problem is. Well, you know, there's drinking and driving and uh, that's a bad still, thing, right? Yeah. You still see a lot of that's, you know, a lot of that's going on. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I've known a few people, maybe two that uh, were uh, hit. Uh, well, actually, more than that, while uh, a drunk uh, behind the wheel was, you know, hit them or killed them or whatever. Very sad. No, nah, it's, it's very sad. You know, we're not making light of no, that, no, although. No. Mm -mm. So anyways, these frivolous lawsuits just crack me up, hell. And, you know, this is really a statement about society. It's not a, a blind issue or not a cited issue. It's just people nowadays just don't seem to want to take responsibility for their own actions. Yeah, especially the millenniums out there. There's a whole topic in itself, right? The millenniums? Millennials and everything. I think you yeah. probably come from the millennium time period, don't you? Aren't you? Weren't you born? No. No? No, I'm Generation X. Next, 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 <laughs> next, man. What that means, I have no idea. I just know I'm Generation X. I think it's Generation X and Generation Y, then Millennials or something. I don't know. I don't know. I, I know I'm part I, of the caveman era myself, so... You Are you a, uh, you know, a Facebook user, Randy? Do you like it, hate it? I'm... I'm kind of in between. I don't post much. I'm on, uh, but I don't post too much. I don't like a lot of the things that they do, like the the memory issue. I suppose we're gonna oh my memories. I, a lot of people, uh, you know, you see, oh this person or that post person has not posted their memories or haven't updated their memories yet. Oh come on. You know the Facebook. I'm gonna start calling it the Facebook. Going mm -hmm. back to the way it should have been. Yep. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I'm guilt. one of those people that has not posted my memories. I, I just don't care. You know, when I get a notification on my news feed that XYZ person and you became friends eight years ago, just because we became Facebook friends, uh, I doesn't need – uh, an anniversary post and everything. I, Facebook drives me bonkers. I do like Facebook. Um, I've, I've reconnected with so many people that I grew up with and just, you know, I've connected with a lot of great blind people from around the world that I might not have connected with. But the one thing that just still drives me bonkers about Facebook is the news feed. Why can't the default just be the time order from newest to first? Why do I have to go click on, you know, I know you can go into um, that last tab more and then go click, you know, and then see See it in recent memory. Facebook. Double tap to open. Action. More. Tab. 505. Most recent. 319. Button. In progress. Most recent. See, it's too much work for me to do all that stuff. Yeah. I just, yeah, too I much just don't want to want to do it. I just want to read my stuff and, and go on. And I am i didn't realize, is that for uh, sighted people as well, uh, that they have to uh, take everything out of order? Yeah. Well, Facebook, they've, they, you know, they changed things years ago where they decided, we're going to show you what we think you want to see instead of mm -hmm. just put it in the recent chronological order. Yep, yep. Yeah. So not enamored with these, you know, latest changes with memories and comment on this. You wrote this post seven years ago do you want to comment on it again yep and then all these people that uh you know send you birthday uh birthday wishes and that's okay if you know me but you know i get people that are crawling out of the woodwork wishing me happy birthday and then uh people were saying well who is this person well i don't know i have no idea they're just we're, we're friends, but but we're more of acquaintances than friends. You know what I mean? This is the truth. I get hundreds of birthday messages on Facebook, and I'm going, who are these people? I don't know them, you know? I love on my birthday just sitting back, drinking my coffee, going through, reading who's left me a Facebook uh, happy birthday message. I actually kind of enjoy that. Yeah. I'm much more popular online than I am in the real world because nobody will call me on my birthday to wish me a happy birthday. Oh, I have to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody get their friends together and call Brian on his birthday. Yeah, yeah. No, but uh, I, I do enjoy that. But I, I'm the same way. I don't get the people that I don't know that either they're comics and I've become friends with them or I just accidentally clicked accept a friend request that I have no clue who they are. Oh, well, I've uh, when I've accepted people, I haven't I've had to block only one one human uh, well, or a bot. I'm not sure which, but just one person I've had to block. So I've been pretty lucky. Yeah, I don't think I've ever blocked anybody, and I've got an open Facebook pro. I don't care who sees it, because I, I just, you know, I'm not ashamed of anything, except my body. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Since we recorded the last show, I am now a, what we call an IRA Explorer. <laughs> You're familiar with the IRA glasses, right, oh, Randy? absolutely, you bet. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll tell you, um... 
I think they're fantastic, but I got to tell you, there was a lot of frustration getting started with them, Randy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they send you, you know, a nice package and everything, and you get the glasses. They actually sent me a, a pair of the uh, wired bone conducting headphones. Have you ever used those? I have used them, and uh, to be perfectly uh, blunt about it, I I hate them. I loved them. I was I didn't think I'd like them at all, and I really liked them. They're great to use in a bar, by the way. Maybe I don't have any bones in my head. Maybe that's the maybe that's the issue. How long do you use a pair? <laughs> Very sparingly. I I just don't care for them. I'm, I mean, they're probably okay for speech, but uh, you know, for anything else, I don't care for them much. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I, I don't listen to a lot of music, because um, mm-hmm. I, I, in my opinion, there hasn't been a good band since Jim Morrison died. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> getting back to Ira, though, I, I, I do like the bone conducting headphones. I listen to a podcast; they sound great. Ira's customer service is phenomenal. I had an issue; they sent me the AT and T MiFi, and the glasses kept losing the signal, which is pretty important. Yeah. Got on the phone with a couple of the engineers there. Um, they decided, you know, yes, I was definitely having issues. And within a few days, they went ahead and sent me a Verizon MiFi. And since I connected to it, uh, the signal seems to be much better. I need to use it a little more. But I was very impressed how quick they, they, they handled everything. And uh, so if you do sign up and you're having connectivity issues, it could be your, your MiFi spot. But I'll tell you, Randy, my first experience uh, with Ira was phenomenal and it was funny i walked down my street which i've walked down thousands of times and you know you never really know what's around you and it was just so nice to hear oh be careful there's a tree branch sticking out on the right or there's a person coming up on the left oh they're gonna pass around you on the left and then i found out some of the buildings that i thought were apartment buildings were actual single family homes (laughs) well living where you are i would have thought the first thing you would have thought of was was muggers dude this is 1970s new york (laughs) (laughs) Well, now let's say that you are out and about uh, using Ira. Do you still have conductivity issues, or is it just through Wi-Fi? Uh, I know uh, I can't go into details. I know that uh, Ira is doing a couple of things where the MiFi connection very, very soon is going to get even better. So the connectivity issues will probably be gone by the wayside. But the operators are all fantastic, and like I said, their customer service is very impressive. So overall, besides the connectivity issues, which is an important thing, you know, because if you're not connected and they can't see what you see, what's the point? Uh, overall, I've been very, very impressed, and I've only had it for about 10 days so far. Yeah, well, we're going to have to do a 3 two, one here because somebody's at my door. I thought the dogs wanted to comment on the Ira glasses. You know, one of my favorite apps, NFB Newsline. Uh, are you an NFB Newsline user? I am, yep. And it's funny because I love when I get app updates, and there are certain apps where you just you just say to yourself, you know, that really doesn't need to be updated. It works pretty perfect. But uh, NFB Newsline, which uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with it, it's a great app uh, put out by obviously the NFB where you could subscribe to almost any newspaper in the country. You've got a lot of uh, magazine publications uh, like Rolling Stone, ESPN the Magazine, Farmer's Market or whatever. I mean, just anything you want to subscribe to. Of course, Randy, I found the one newspaper that I wanted to read that wasn't listed. (laughs) Yeah, what's that? The Gainesville Sun, where I went to college. Oh, yeah. Now, ask me me what I use uh, NFB app for. What do you use the NFB app for? I never thought you'd ask. <laughs> TV listings. Really? Okay. Now, the reason that I use it uh, for TV listings is because in the uh, infinite wisdom of our cable company, uh, nothing they can uh, put out there uh, rivals the app for its TV listings. They're great, great listing for my cable company. So the talking guides or whatever, I can find things quicker with the NFB app than I can find them on the guides. Because, you know, I only have so much time during the day. I It seems like a lot of their lives are, they just read constantly. And I, oh, I can't do it. I just can't. You only have so much time in a day? I actually have 24 hours in a day. I have 20, uh, 20 28, I think. When I left, 20, uh, 20 out. Yeah, you know, it's a great app. Uh, um, oh, yeah. yeah. And it's fun. It hasn't, you know, it's. I guess it really hasn't been updated uh, since uh, the app came out, but that's changing because the that's, NFB. That's not quite true. It's up, been updated one time. Pardon me. 
<laughs> it's been updated one time. Three hey, years, maybe. Hey, here on that blind tech show, we're all about getting it right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah you gotta get it right but it's um i think the thing that bugs me about them uh is uh now they've got this campaign going where they want you to uh put yourself on the line and uh tell them what you would really like and that's okay feedback is important in my opinion but you know there are a few things that i'd like to have seen change what about you yeah you know um I mean, it's such a basic app. I mean, I guess I'd like to maybe see the newspapers, maybe. Sometimes it seems like not all the articles from the newspaper are there. Oh, one of the things I don't think you you could share, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think you could share to any apps like Twitter or anything from NFT Newsline. I think you're right. Yeah. I don't know if that's because of legality issues, so that could be the case, because I know I know this is a free service for the blind, so there might be some issues about the way the content is provided, but I'd love some sharing options, you know, where it would be easy for me to share to Facebook or Twitter and everything. But, you know, I, I think it's great that, you know, they're looking for people's feedback, they're looking for comments, and if you want to chime in, uh, you can go ahead and do so at iosfeedback at nfb.org. And uh, let them know what uh, what you think. So, uh, are you going to be chiming in there, uh, Randy? Yeah, actually, one thing that I'd like to see, I'd like them to put in the actions rotor, just a simple add to favorites. In my opinion, it's kind of clunky to do it the way that uh, you have to add your TV listings or your subscriptions uh, into favorites. One flick and it's done, you know? Exactly. You know, it's funny. I don't use the NFB Newsline as much as I used to because I'm using the Apple News app a, a lot, which I really uh-huh. do enjoy. Yeah. Do you use the Apple News app at all? You know, I don't. So I have two news apps. One is AP Mobile, and uh, I can't remember the name of the other one. Uh, but they just update news as it happens, and I find them really good. So I can. What I can do is I can uh, uh, shoot Brian. Oh, let's just leave it there. I can shoot Brian. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, I, I've got like a hundred news sources, and the, the one thing that cracks me up is I, you know, I'll go into favorites and I'll look at Apple. Still can't even when you go read an article and you go back to your article list, it still just says unread. <laughs> There's a lot of that stuff that still happens uh, with even even using uh, Outlook these days. Uh, unread message, unread message. You know, there's just a lot of that stuff going on. Yeah, yeah, but you'd think Apple could get it right in their own native news app, which is interesting because, you know, while NFB does want your feedback, guess who will never, ever want your feedback? IRS. No, not the IRS. Well, yeah. <laughs> iOS. <laughs> oh, yeah. Apple, they, they don't, you know, yeah, you can contact them, but they don't really want to hear from you. But, uh, you know, we're, we're in kind of that low of the news cycle because we got, uh, what, Probably September 12th, I believe, is the Apple Day, where they'll be announcing, you know, what we what we've heard for months, the new iOS as well as the new iPhone. Let's start off with iOS 11, uh, Randy. Anything right. you're looking forward to, or you just don't care anymore? <laughs> I see. So the fact of the matter is, I do care, and one of the things that I'm having a real issue with, and I think it depends on what model of device that you're using, and uh, that for me is battery issues oh my god i am having a battery issue with my uh, iphone 6s and as we record this we're using 10.3.3 um i am and uh i can't go from seven o'clock in the morning to about nine o'clock i'm down to 20 percent and uh yes i have unchecked all the phone home apps that i can do and I still get just a terrible amount of battery drain. You know, it's funny because I leave the home and I look like a like I have a bomb strapped to me because I have so <laughs> many chargers <laughs> strapped to me and so many different technological things. I'm, I'm lucky I haven't gotten shot. You know, somebody think that I'm wired or something. But uh, I'll call my friends and we'll see if we can take care of that. Yeah, yeah. So Good it's. Plan. I can't leave the home without them. In fact, I just had to buy a new messenger type bag uh, for the carry the Ira glasses, along with all the little doohickeys and the MiFi and the. I, you know, I've I've kind of, I've got like three different types of Bluetooth earpieces. And <laughs> I'm a walking techno. I don't know what I am. <laughs> I'd like to see uh, some better performance on batteries. You know, you're probably thinking, well, you know, you're using. Um, well, who knows what you're thinking out there, but. Um, it's like, for instance, Seeing AI, I mean, great app, but man, what a battery drainer. 
And so uh, I understand why, you know, because it's a live video and uh, I can understand why the battery might drain. But I'm not talking about them. I'm just talking about everyday uh, usage of streaming audio, book reading. Um, I happen to use my iPhone. It's always, I always have it. And, uh, you know, a lot of people can just attest to it. You're always using your phone. You're on it all the time. You're um, uh, you're using it for one thing and another. And, uh, man, it's just terrible. You think it's the operating system that's causing that drain? Well, sometimes, you know, when the operating system gets changed over to a new update, the battery seems to uh, get a lot better. But since 3.3, 3, uh, it's for me, it's gotten worse. Yeah, yeah. I, I normally, you know, can't wait for the new uh, operating systems to come out. In fact, last year I, I beta tested, uh, but, you know, everything that I've heard about this one, I, there's just nothing that's that's exciting me. Uh, I mean, I'm not looking forward to the change in the notification center to, uh, I, in fact, we talked about that on the last show, but uh, I, I, I already forgot what they're calling it. I know it's no longer the notification center, but, uh, yeah, I'm not looking forward to, uh, to that change and. There's just really nothing that that I've heard that's you know exciting in iOS 11. So uh, we'll see. You know maybe there'll be a few things they haven't announced, or maybe the performance. I the most important thing to me would be an improvement on Siri performance. But oh man, man, I have a problem with Siri's content in general. You know, uh, one of the things that I just really hate is when you ask Siri a question, she goes, "I found this information on the web for you. Please check it out." And uh, if I wanted to do that, I'd just go to Google and look it up myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Settings. Heading. Siri and search. Button. Siri suggestions. Heading. Siri can make suggestions in apps or when you use search, look up, and keyboard. About Siri suggestions and privacy. Link. Suggestions and search. On. The suggestions and look up. On. Siri, you know, when it first came out, it was so great. I just feel it's, the quality has gone downhill and I don't really feel that they've advanced it as much as they should have. Well, I think they uh, right now, Siri I'm talking about, I think it's being rivaled by our uh, cylindrical friend, the Echo device. Yeah. And soon the Samsung Home as they just announced, uh, they were coming out with one, which I have zero interest in. I didn't hear that. Yeah, they're going to be coming out, of course, you know. Uh, in fact, I'm announcing now on this show, uh, soon you'll be able to get the Brian Fischler home speaker, home <laughs> assistant. Where... Yeah, and I, I can just hear the invocation. Uh, uh, hey, Brian, and you'd hear, yeah, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> but I figure everybody else is having a home assistant. Why not uh, that blind tech show having a home assistant? You may as well. Yeah, you may as well have one. The yeah. uh, Brian assistant. Yeah, the Brian yeah, the Brian. <laughs> the Brian. <laughs> and then we could all have the life of Brian, right? Yeah, exactly. The life of oh. Brian. Very, very good. <laughs> for those of you millennials, look it up. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Monty Python. Sure. So we got the uh, the iPhone 8. Oh, boy. <clears throat> and another thing that I just, you know, it just doesn't, it seems like the really the big thing is going to be augmentative real, AR. Is that it? Yep. Augmentative reality? Mm-hmm. I, this is not something that blind people, as as of now, this is not something blind people are going to care about. I think in a year or two, it could potentially be used for some pretty useful things. Yep, I, I would tend to agree. What are your feelings on the iPhone 8? Do you think they're biting off a little bit more than we care to swallow? <laughs> I, I did the math earlier today because, I honestly, I had no idea how much. I have the iPhone 7, and I, I have no clue how much it costs, but I figured it, it's about $749. Yeah, that's about right. So you're hearing that the new phone's going to be $999, beginning price point. Yep. Honestly, I think Apple, they are just tired of being the most financially successful company in the world. There's an article that came out that only one in every five iPhone users plan to get a new iPhone. Mm -hmm. This is the first time I have no plans to get a new iPhone. And I'm somebody who I'm paying for an AT&T yearly plan where I can update every year. And I'm just going to ride this one out for my 18 months. That way I'll own it outright and everything. And, you know, part of it has to do with the price plan. Part of it has to do with there's really nothing exciting that I've heard about so far. Yeah, wireless charging, that'd be 
kind of cool, but I, that's not something I need. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see it. I have more, uh, I've got more chargers and more wires and cables than I care to count. I can just walk every few feet and plug my phone in, basically. I've got so many things, so. And I've read somewhere, and I don't quote me on this, that uh, Apple kind of went low-end for wireless charging, that the gigahertz are really low, so it's going to take a while for your phone to charge, so that's not exciting. And at first, I really liked Tim Cook. But now I feel like Apple is kind of this rudderless ship and, you know, they're going back to, you know, you know, 10 years ago or I guess 15 years ago when Apple was only for rich people and, you know, they were higher priced items that, you know, people like you and me probably couldn't afford. And I feel that they're going back to that model as a company. And, you know, the reports tell you people are just not going to pay that kind of money for an iPhone anymore. Well, would you pay that much for a HomePod? What are they, three-something for a HomePod? I have zero, zero interest in the HomePod. Yeah. You know, everybody says the speakers on the uh, Echo device are terrible. I don't think so. I don't either. They, trust me, I've had three neighbor complaints, so. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I disagree with that. That wasn't about the Echo. That was about the tenant. (laughs) Problem is, I don't shower, so, you know, they probably, it was a a nose thing. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, I've got a dot, and I can plug that dot or Bluetooth at any speaker that I want, so I I couldn't go on the premise that the... um, the speaker is the end all for the uh, HomePod, and I'm, I'm not trying to knock HomePods or anybody else that's going to get one. Go, no, you can knock it here. <laughs> oh, if I forgot what uh, network I was on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I think they're too little, too late, actually. Agreed. The one thing about the dot, a little bit of advice: don't put it next to a, a desk fan because it can't hear you <laughs> over the fan. Uh, well, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I have that problem uh, half the time with my dot, which is on my nightstand. And uh, yeah, that's it's the only thing about the dot. That you, and and by the way, how weird is this? So sometimes I'll I'll tell my dot on my nightstand to set a wake up call, you know, for noon. Anyway, uh, the dot doesn't hear me yet. The echo in the living room hears me. <laughs> I get that sometimes. I do. I get they. What is that far? What is that far field communication? Whatever they call it. Um, but I find when I send a request to, um, I've got uh, I've got two dots and an echo, and if I'm near uh, my dot, which is you know uh, 180, probably about seven feet away, I will say something in my. Well, I'll admit it right here on this podcast that uh, I do have a dot in the bathroom. And uh, you have a dot in the bathroom. I do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm sorry, but you're a rich person. <laughs> uh, you're a one percenter, Randy. If you have a dot in the bedroom, I mean bathroom. And the bedroom. And the bedroom. and an echo in the kitchen. Why in the kitchen? Um. Well, Brian, I cook. <laughs> so. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you may have caught the cooking with the hazelnuts podcast. That. Uh, That's true. Yeah. Hey. hey. Go ahead and promote it here. I just did. It's time now for another edition of Cooking with the Hazelnuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In this show, we provide you with sound effects. Mm, You know, in fact, you see (laughs) Hey, that's a pretty good imitation. Wasn't that great? (laughs) Yeah. How would you like to submit a recipe to us? Just tell us the recipe you'd like to submit on Twitter at ACB Hazelnuts. That's A C B. Hazelnuts, H-A-Z-E-L-N-U-T-S. Do you have a suggestion for the show? Have something to offer? Just tweet us. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I use it for, for timing and recipes and uh, all kinds of stuff. So it's a great kitchen appliance, I think. Yeah, no. no I, mine's in the living room and uh, the bedroom and everything. You hear about the one that came out through, uh, what was it, a $35 one from, uh, what's the, the company that makes all the great charging devices? Oh, Anchor? Yeah, have you looked at the one they just released? It's it is now on Amazon. We discussed it last show. Uh, Anchor came out with, uh, I believe it's a thirty-five dollar price point. It doesn't seem to do everything the Echo does, not yet. You can't make calls over it or anything. So well, that's the thing about the tap that you can't do that either. Now I thought the tap was a really good idea until they until they started working on uh, nothing. <laughs> uh, you know, you can't use it for calls. You can't use it for uh, drop-ins, which is uh, their intercom system. So I, I think they're falling behind. As far as the anchor goes, I could be wrong, but isn't the anchor just a touch device? Don't you? you, you... No. No. Okay. 
Now, now it's similar to the dot, very similar to the dot. Oh, uh, although right. it doesn't, you can't do calls. There were some other things. I, I don't think all the music services are available. Not yet, but you know, it's supposed to be a better sounding dot. You know, and that's one thing. The sound quality on the dot is is not as great. But it's a small device. It's very worth it. Anybody that doesn't have one, I would suggest picking them up, especially if they go on sale all the time. So uh, yeah, they, I am a big fan of it. I've got mine docked with the Vox. And I know these sound like strange terms to some of you people, but those of you who are keeping up with technology, the Vox, V-A-U-X, is a device that you can dock. You just set your dot in the top of it. It looks like a like a, a round drum or a barrel with, with webbing around all sides, screen a screen, so you know it could be heard all around. And you hook USB connections to it, a USB for power and the connection to plug the speaker in. I've seen some Bluetooth devices and uh, I didn't care for them as much so i just plug my uh, device into the vox and it's pretty darn good sounding actually and, and a lot of a lot of level a lot of volume i'll have to, I'll have to look into that because uh, although i don't really use it for much like i said i primarily use it for wake-up calls listening to uh my favorite skill on the echo devices is the mlb uh at bat you know, you just tell it, play MLB at bat, play the Yankees game, and in seconds you're listening uh, to the Yankees game. And Or you can do that with uh, your favorite team. Yeah, it's a great little skill. What skills on the Echo device are you using? Have you found anything that you really like? Oh, I do. Uh, I have one that I go to all the time, and that <laughs> that's where is my phone. So I just ask to enable that skill, and it just calls my phone. It's just a simple skill that does that, and uh, it brings your phone until you find it, and then you pick it up, and then it disconnects. It's, I never lose my phone because it's always in my top pocket. <laughs> well, when you reach my age, you just set anything down, and you don't know where it is uh, two minutes later. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've got that to look forward to. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, going back to the Echo and stuff, there's a lot of great trivia. Um, Games. The Jeopardy skill. Uh, yeah. Seinfeld trivia, baseball trivia, all all kinds of trivia things, and uh, I really like the uh, – the problem is I, I load them that first time, and then I can never remember what the keywords are to launch them. Oh, I see. That's what uh, – you know, that is what the problem is with uh, – and that kind of leads into, a, leads into another segue, but the thing that uh, makes me really mad is that uh, I can't remember the skill names, so I got to go under my skills and look them up, you know? It's funny. That's that's the thing they need to have, and I haven't tried this verbally, where you can ask it, what's my skills or what's topic-wise, what's my trivia skills, and it can tell you. So it's just quick and easy, because I, I can't stand having to go into the app. And uh, yeah, you know, that's something they do have to fix. I don't I don't think that... Alexa, what are my trivia skills? <laughs> it didn't even hear me. <laughs> I think I killed it. <laughs> Yeah, mine did. I, I think yours heard me, but mine didn't. I know you and I have chatted Wi-Fi That's to Wi-Fi hilarious. on our just don't like devices, me. and uh, I think it's fantastic. So is the messaging, so is texting. It all works great. Yeah, it was nice. That was fun the other day when we were just going back and forth. You're really the only person I've done that with, just sending a, like quick voice texts to each other and everything. And the only thing I don't like is it's uh, you have to go uh, because I was not sure if I had a new one. I said, "Play me my messages," and it said, "You have no messages from today to see your earlier messages go to the app." So that you know, I, it needs to get I guess smarter capabilities to say. Play my messages from a day ago and everything, because like I said, I don't like going to the app to do things. Right. Oh, yeah, I agree. Uh, and another thing, the app on the iPhone, I think, needs a lot of work for for the Alexa phone calling uh, option, because uh, you got to turn voiceover off and voice. You set your own device up. That was not me that <laughs> time. <laughs> anyway. I couldn't find a contact matching. You set your own device, so that was now. To see your contacts, go to the Alexa app. Oh boy. <clears throat> so uh, yeah. Anyway, we we both like that feature. Uh, they have a drop-in feature, so if you enable it, uh, be careful who you enable. Uh, and that is, uh, I think, really a cool feature. It's an intercom feature. I don't know if you ever used that one, Brian. No, I I, I always thought I thought that was just for the video one. So they oh. have an audio drop-in as well. Yes. Yep. So if you have two devices, uh, like if you had one in your bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> you could actually um, just say drop in. You have to name your devices. So I've got one called kitchen, one called bedroom, and one called bathroom. 
So whatever room I'm in, if I want to drop in on the bedroom intercom, we'll call it, and just say, you know who, cylindrical friend, drop into bedroom dot, and she'll just do it. And then you have communications just like an intercom. It's, I think it's just fabulous. That's a great way to spy on family. Well, that's just what I was going to say. For people who are elderly uh, and or have dementia, what was I just saying? Now, yeah, exactly. Now, can I drop in on my parents yes. who are in yeah, Florida? Yeah, or no? yeah. But both of you, well, no, actually, I beg your pardon. You can drop in on them, and uh, unless they set it up, you can't. Uh, and I think some privacy issue should be worked on that. But yeah, you can. So if you just wanted to drop in on them, it it does chime and let you know that uh, a communication has been invoked. But, you know, if they didn't know what it was, they would just think, you know, it's a set of wind chimes or something, you know. Yeah, well, I think that's great, you know, for parents that have kids that need, you know, overseeing or. Yeah, I, I just thought that drop-ins was for for the video feed. No, and everything. but just be and, careful uh, who you turn that on for, because, you know, you could literally listen to someone um, doing anything. Doing anything. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't think I'll be allowing anybody to drop in on me. I, I would like to get, like, drop-ins from, like, Sandra Bullock and Jennifer Aniston. I've though, got them so, already. Uh, oh, you do? You yeah, oh, yeah. Do you want them? Yeah. You want, I can, yeah. Oh, so you just pass that along. I, yeah. Okay. And one of the things I might be buying, uh, uh, although I, I have no idea how this works. I've got to put my name in to have them contact me, is... Uh, have you heard about these eSight classes? Yep, talk about them. I know nothing about them. I've heard of them, but uh, this one's yours. Yeah, I, I don't know too much about them either. In fact, we I wanted to ask the listeners, if anybody's got these things, these eSight glasses, please do text text us, uh, tweet us in, not text us in, tweet us in at, at Blind Tech Show on Twitter or email us in and let us know uh, how you're enjoying these things and how they work. Uh, you can email us in at thatblindtechshow at gmail.com. From my understandings, I, I did read a lot on the website. Um, these, I guess, work with people with low vision, um, and it seems like very, very low vision. You know, they, they calculate the, some kind of ways, and I guess they've got LCD screens on it, and people are seeing things with these glasses. I mean, they're exploding. I just saw a big post on Facebook about them. And I, I tried to watch the videos, and uh, whoever created the videos after 30 seconds of nothing, I stopped watching. you got to get some described video <laughs> onto the videos for the video for the blind people. It kind of reminds me of the time that uh, the human... Uh... What are they called? Human Social Services. Uh, from where I used to work for Eastman Kodak, I worked there for 22 years, and for uh, my uh, for my uh, what was 20th year service, uh, the Human uh, Services Director. She was uh, apparently a really good-looking blonde, and <clears throat> well, uh, she wasn't apparently very bright because she um, gave me a print watch. Really? And what this has to do with uh, Google stuff, well, it, it's in reference to your music. Uh, they play music and, you know, they they don't describe any of the videos. Well, what was I going to do with that print watch? Yeah, yeah. Think, people. But, no, this is something, like I said, it's it's new. Um, I don't know if it's out of Europe or where it's from, but it's something that I'm going to be looking into. Because, you know, I've got my vision. I don't know about your vision, Randy. Do you have light sensitivity at all or no? I, I, have, I have that. That's um, what I have. Yeah. If these could help me see, I mean, I don't think they would. I think my vision's too low and limited. I can't make anything out. I yeah. can just tell if it's light out. But the way these sounded and everything, like I said, they're blowing up on Facebook. It's funny because all the people that click like on Facebook were sighted people that I know. <laughs> How much uh, do they do they run? Do you uh, know a price point? Didn't see a price. You need to put in your contact info and a representative from. But they did have something that said, you know. That's probably shown on the YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they had something that said we we're, we're going to make these affordable, not affordable, but we're going to we're going to, you know, if you need these, we'll work out a price plan for you. So I, it sounds like they're a company that will work with you uh, depending on your financial situation. The name of the company, if you want to look into this further, is eSight Glasses and just do a Google search. It'll pull them right up. But uh, it was something that uh, really seems to be picking up some steam. And uh, I, I don't know. I mean, if I could put a pair of glasses on and. All of a sudden, even just if it would help me just see the computer screen, I, I'd be fine with <laughs> with that. You know, that'd be a that'd be incredible. So uh, I'm gonna look into it. Yeah, yeah. But now it's time for everybody's favorite game. What's pissing off Brian now? <laughs> yeah. So and you know, this was a weird one because this was like an overreaction on my part. Um, 
you know, going back to my old show, I've talked about, you know, how great Yahoo Fantasy has been. And I've been working with them for over two years and how great and committed they've been to accessibility. Well, uh, Randy, I know you're not in it, but we've got the uh, the Blind Abilities Yahoo Fantasy Football League drafting uh, this Tuesday. Actually, the draft will probably occur before this episode even comes out. And I went in this weekend to, to test, you know, just to make sure everything was accessible. And sure enough, I get into the draft area and all the button, they have a new layout. Everything's unlabeled. Nothing's being oh, announced no. with voiceover. And I went ballistic, Randy. <laughs> yeah, we got 14 people. We have 12 people returning from last year. And uh, Jeff, as well as Pete of Blind Abilities, now returning. Well, I sent a scathing email to both of my contacts at Yahoo you know, how can you do this? I've talked to you up so much. You know, we tried to have you on the show. You guys have done such a great job with accessibility. Uh, yeah, I kind of overreacted, Randy. <laughs> well, what did they do? Uh, did have they... Ends up, this is a beta thing. And if you go into, if you are doing Yahoo Fantasy, uh, not with us, you need to get to the home screen where it says sidebar. After that, you open your settings in the app. And the first thing there. Do not use beta draft version. You click that, and guess what? It goes back to the old draft version, and that's 100% accessible. <laughs> so it was overreaction theater for me, and I do appreciate my contacts at Yahoo for getting back to me. And for one, not implementing that beta for everybody. The reason they implemented the beta automatically is they want the most people possibly to use it, testing it out. They are well aware that uh, it does not work with vo- I mean, it works with voiceover, but there's a lot of issues with it, and that's something that will all be fixed before that, that new version of the draft applet becomes the only version of the draft applet. So it was great uh, to get a response back so quick from my contacts at Yahoo and Sometimes you you, you got to just stay calm, all is well, and uh, wait, uh, not not uh, try and jump down people's throat, which I was guilty of. So uh, that was great to see that mm-hmm. they, they still make it accessible. Yeah, it is, but they should at least come up with something like, uh, and I know they want more people to use than the not, but at least uh, the guys over it uh, that are dealing with Skype come up with a uh, screen, do you wish to use this, yes or no? And I was right in the middle of a podcast, and I said, sure, of course I want to use it. So I clicked the yes button, and I was ready to go on the air. And guess what? Uh, back then, this was a couple of months ago, it was just a terrible Skype experience. So that. Uh, well, we've all had terrible Skype experiences. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not familiar. You podcast? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, as this is a new show and we're using recurring hosts, it would be rude of me not to say – is there anything pissing off Randy? Well, I, I hate to say this, but uh, uh, yeah, just a couple of weeks ago, I had a problem with uh, Amazon. I had ordered a whole bunch of stuff, dog food, cat food, snacks for yours truly, big R, um, <laughs> all kinds of you know dishwashing detergent, coconut oil, which I use on my skin, but we won't get into that. Um, Ooh, nice. You know, just all kinds of things. And then my orders started getting canceled left and right. I did everything I could to get them back, and I just couldn't. They wouldn't give me my order, uh, fill my order. So I called customer service. Not only did they help to reinstate my order, they uh, did everything they could to give me uh, my normal discounts with subscribe and save, but they gave me also a, another huge percentage uh, because I had a problem with them. But uh, this is the case of remaining calm because I was. I was really nice about it, and I got two discounts instead of one uh, discount. So, you know, I guess that kind of um, made me uh, upset when they started canceling all my orders. I was like, well, my money's as good as anybody else's money. That's fantastic to hear. And and now that uh, 60-inch TV, I'm really having trouble with that. I'm going to have to call and complain and get two discounts to get the, to get that 60-inch TV. But no. What, what was the problem? Was it loading in the app was the problem? Or your order just disappeared? Or was it after you placed your order where it disappeared? Nobody could figure it out. He couldn't even figure The representative couldn't figure it out. Um, I canceled one order. I canceled just one order. And then uh, my orders didn't go through starting with that. So okay. there was a glitch somewhere. Yeah. Uh, and I ended up talking with this gentleman for about an hour. And he said, truthfully, uh, he wanted to know what podcasts I was going to be on uh, because I was, he wanted to listen to them all because I came across, uh, he said, professional and uh, all that kind of stuff. So he uh, he said, I really will listen. A lot of people won't, but 
I'm going to listen to uh, the things that you're interested in because you've been a great uh, prime customer and, you know, all that stuff. So I, I actually believed him. He's a really interesting guy. But I think it was because I canceled one order. Everything just started to cancel one. It was just crazy. It was one right after another. And I'm going, what's going on here? <laughs> you know? Uh, so, yeah, that really, really made me mad. Yeah, you know, one thing that does drive me nuts with Amazon lately, um, so I, I wanted to get a carrying bag, you know, for the IRA and everything. So I found a carrying bag for like eight bucks that seemed to meet my needs and everything. And I went to place the order and it said, you, this will be added to your wish list because it's part of $25 or more. It was some weird thing where you had to order $25 or more worth of products oh, yeah. to get the bag at eight. And who the heck knows where they have. This is something that's starting to bother me about Amazon. They have so many different things where this is eligible for prime shopping. This isn't, or this is part of a package where you have to order $36 or they, pantry, they, pantry items. Yeah. Pantry, <laughs> it's, some of this stuff is starting to drive me bonkers because, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's, it, it's, it's almost too much. And I'm a huge Amazon. I mean, I order everything over Amazon and uh, are you a prime member? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm not a prime member. That's my religion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to talk to Leah, Leah about that. Uh, that she'll she'll say, oh, you know, you're they're draining your uh, mental abilities. You're hooked on Amazon yeah, now. Yeah, she thinks Scientology is draining her financial bank account. She should be what my religion of Amazon Prime is doing to my bank account. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fantastic stuff though. They'll do yeah. anything they can to rectify it. Yeah, yeah, you know, and uh, you know, they're 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 a higher power, and I could get through to them all the time. When, <laughs> yes, whenever no. I call, somebody answers. <laughs> oh, and be very careful. I must add, if you, uh, I recommend uh, getting their phone number, either committing it to memory or putting it on your phone, um, because I was in a big hurry one time, and I called, uh, did a search rather for uh, Amazon. And, um, you know, just something that I just didn't even think about. And I did a quick Google search and I called the number and I got connected to these guys over in New Delhi somewhere. And uh, they said, hold on. I thought you were going to say you called the rainforest. (laughs) Well, it was almost. But I called and they told me that uh, before they proceeded, they needed my account number. They needed everything they needed to to actually look at my computer. The reason they got the this service is because my computer was sending out, (laughs) first of all, what kind of a computer do you have? And I, you know, my flags just went up. Oh so yeah. I, I've got a Windows PC, and they said, "Well, your computer, your computer is sending out waves, and we need to fix that." And I go, "Um, yeah, right." So I told them that uh, I was a, a retired tech trainer, and I'm very familiar with computers and block click. Oh kinda... no, yeah, we we talked about this a few shows ago. Uh, that that this scam, same exact scam. Yeah, people getting messages now that your your Mac that it's Apple calling, and your Mac uh, is infected. Not to use your computer till you call them. And I called them, and uh, you know, get the Indian because it's India, and uh, I had so much fun saying very very dirty things to them until they hung up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they were running a scam, and I I gave them what I felt they deserved and everything. But uh, yeah, so be careful out there. Yes, be careful out there because. Only you could prevent forest fires. Only oh. you. <laughs> so, uh, Randy, I got to ask you, man. We call, we call, we call. It. What you watching? What you reading? What you watching? What you reading? I am uh, really going to promote uh, Netflix here. Uh, I'm a big Netflix fan. I have recently bought two smart TVs, and I can watch them on my phone. And I have other means to get descriptive videos, but now those are Amazon TVs you bought, right? Yep. Yeah. What? Yep. Tell, what? Do you remember the make and model of those? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Can so, you tell anyway. us? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd never ask. Uh, they're called Amazon Element, and uh, they come in a 43, 49, a 60, and a 65 inch. I guess I bought it at the right time because you can't get the 43 inches. They don't know when they're going to come into stock again. Yeah, I'm I'm very happy with some of the descript- descriptive. Uh, well, I like their descriptive videos first of all. I've been watching Bosch. I've heard good things. I'm 
I'm waiting for the Amazon app to come to the Apple TV because I refuse to. Well, I guess I could play it on the iPhone and then stream it to the TV. But uh, yeah, I, I have no Amazon uh, app right now. That's uh, well, the TiVo, as you recall, I could get the Amazon content, but I can't get it to play the described video for Amazon. I don't remember you mentioning that, but you must have. I just forgot about it. But wow, that's that's crazy. But uh, so these TVs you got from Amazon, though, obviously it, it plays their content and it plays uh, the content with described video. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Have you seen Sneaky Pete? I've heard that's uh, really good. I have not, but I don't know if it's descriptive. My son was telling me about Sneaky Pete. He just loves the show. So very good descriptive videos. I wish that Amazon, though, would put out more descriptive videos. I know they're they're both uh, attempting to put more out there, but Amazon's a little slow on the uptake, in my opinion. But they say they're they're going to be putting more more out there. Yeah, I've I've I'm waiting until we get that app, and then I'll start. You know, unless the TiVo gets the described video for Amazon, the described video works for Netflix. I need to call TiVo. It's probably a TiVo issue. Uh, you know, yeah. they just don't offer the described video feeds, and I keep waiting. And I, I just really probably need to be more proactive calling them it's not only uh netflix putting them out but they do a great job uh With the description you know the levels don't drop yeah the levels don't drop when they're going to describe something the narrators are good just really good stuff I, i'm not sure if i mentioned on the last show but a show that i've been watching through netflix is sherlock and they've got great described video uh, although i don't know what it is because i had a little trouble understanding the actor's thick english accent at first mm-hmm Yep. Have you seen Sherlock at all? Or? I have not. What's it about? What's the premise? Then I'll tell you one of my favorite ones that I'm watching. Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> well, that, that's, that would seem obvious, but you don't know sometimes. <laughs> uh, no, it's about a turtle named Sherlock. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Another one of my favorites is The Black Mirror. Uh, if you're a Twilight Zone fan or were, I think that's a really good series to get into. Uh, it also is English. And I had a hard time with their uh, accents. Cockney. Beg your pardon? Cockney. Yeah. Cockney As, is what they speak. It was hard to understand uh, yeah, the first episode, but uh, they, they are really way out there, and they're described really well, too. I've heard good things. Yeah, Netflix, Netflix does the – out of everybody, they do the best job uh, with the described video. Uh, have you checked out Stranger Things yet on Netflix? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've seen the whole – I don't know if there's a second series. Coming October 31st. Okay. I saw the whole first yeah. season. Yeah, it was, I like it. I binge-watched, actually. I, I think it took me two days to get through the whole series. Yeah, it was eight, only eight episodes, and I, I really enjoyed it. I, I don't see how they're going to do a second season. I, I, it seems like one of those things that was just a weird hit and everything, but if you haven't seen Stranger Things, you got Netflix, definitely check out the first season. Are you reading anything? Yeah, I actually, I'm reading two different authors, and I can't remember the name of either one of them. Oh, good, it's just huh? because, <laughs> no, they're very good books. They're both uh, sci-fi books. This one, uh, I Am Legion, I Am Bob is uh, one of them. And uh, basically it's about this uh, individual who uh, is put in cryogenics because he was ill and they brought him back. And let's just say they did not bring him back into a human form. I won't go any further than that, but hmm. I Am Legion, I Am Bob is really good. You, know, you and I had an interesting uh, start of a conversation before we started recording. Uh, if you – and you're going to have to bring us into this because you were asking uh, if you read audiobooks, does that make you literate? There's a big discussion on that. Some say Braille is uh, – uh, and I, I'm a big component of Braille, Braille, by the way. I think, you know, obviously there's certainly a place for Braille. And there's a place for audio. And uh, But uh, I guess the definition, if you don't actually read – you are considered illiterate. Yeah, definitely, because, you know, listening is not reading. No, it's just like King of Queens. Remember that episode when they say, uh, uh, Holly says something like, uh, uh, thinking is not knowing. <laughs> I, I don't remember that one per se, but I was a big fan of that show, King of Queens. And uh, Yeah, thinking is not I knowing. I live in Queens. Yeah, well, he was trying to ask if there was any more coke in the fridge, and she said, "I think they can. I think there is." And he goes, "Uh, uh, thinking is." And she goes, "Yes, I know. Thinking is not knowing." Yeah, that was a funny show. I really enjoyed that. I'm a, I'm a Kevin James fan, although his movies not so much. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I, you know, I am not a uh, a Braille. I, I know the alphabet in Braille, but uh, you know, I need to. I'd have to spend a lot more time reading Braille. I just don't have the time. 
But mm-hmm. I, yeah. I, 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 too busy ordering food. Yeah, <laughs> too busy telling devices to do things. And uh, yeah, you no. Know, but you know, as far for the youth, though, you know, people in, in in grade school, middle school, high school, college, I do find Braille to be extremely important and uh, very, very useful for people out there. You know, going into the workforce and everything. You know, you're definitely gonna have to learn it. So. Uh, oh yeah, I I certainly agree. I know uh, the job that I had as a. Uh, uh, an, an assistive technology trainer. Uh, I, I've seen so many people that did not know how to read Braille, and it, it sure did put uh, some uh, disadvantages in their learning. How quickly they learned and what they what they knew is it's really sad to see it. And some people even had the audacity to say reading Braille is not important. Now I'm sure somebody probably could take a snippet of me saying that. <laughs> And get me in all kinds of trouble, but <laughs> I, I assure you. Yeah, we, we, uh, we've now got you saying reading Braille is not. Oh wait, now we've got me saying it. <laughs> oh god, yeah. that's going to end up on the interweb there with the tubes. I'm and, sure uh, all the connections <laughs> yeah. and the fancy dancy device. Bernadette Peters said to me because Bernadette Peters, uh, the actress, she has a charity called Braille Tales, which is great. They they take children's books and they and they get them put into braille and everything and that's actually prisoners doing the brailing and everything and they yeah, i've heard of that they yeah. then bring the books to the schools and so i have known bernadette for quite a while and every time i run into her the first words out of her mouth are brian have you learned braille yet and i say uh, no bernadette <laughs> not yet and she's well not everybody can afford a fancy dancy talking phone <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, uh, but no, she's it's she does great work and everything. So I'm a big fan of hers. But uh, well, Randy, this has been a lot of fun. We're coming to the end here. Anything uh, else you want to add, or do you want to tell the good people uh, where they could find you, where you, they could hear you, besides on this show? Uh, yeah. Well, I'd be happy to. Um, if you'd care to follow me, uh, I'm on Twitter. It's all run together, all one big, uh, one big word. T H E B I G R the big R. I've been uh, that moniker has been uh, hung on me for uh, uh, thirty some years, probably something like that. I'm surprised uh, that one wasn't taken. Believe this or not, when I was on Twitter about five years into my uh, into my Twitter experience, somebody twittered me and said that they wanted me to use another uh, moniker because uh, that was theirs and I shouldn't I shouldn't have it. And glad I, you beat them to the punch. Yeah. Well. I have been that for many, many years. Um, I'm also a co-host of Main Menu on acbradio.org, and you can do a search for uh, Main Menu, and it will it will pop up. And then I do a cooking show called Cooking with the Hazelnuts with my co-host Debbie Hazelton. My co-hosts for Main Menu are Jason Castingway and Janine, and we do that once every other week. Yeah, Janine, uh, she's an Ira user. Yes, um, she is. I've, yep. I've seen her name. Uh, I'm now on the uh, Ira mailing list. I, I've yet to post. I've just been, you know, stalking and reading. <laughs> But uh, I'll tell you, yeah, she's stalking her. The, no, I'm not stalking her. I'm stalking everybody. <laughs> OK, but uh, no, Janine and I have never met or had any interaction or anything. But she's she's had some good posts and everything. And I've been following along and uh, big fan, big fan. So yeah. uh, you've got a big fan of main menu and uh, the cooking with the uh, hazelnuts and uh, all the work you do. And, uh, you know, you great to have you on, uh, you know, as one of our recurring hosts. And, uh, you know, we may have one more recurring host or we might be getting ready to circle back around. So, uh, you know, it wasn't going to just so the listeners who it's not like an endless list of recurring hosts, but I think we've got some good people here and, uh, yeah, I think uh, we're getting them a lot of good information, and uh, the next time we come out, I, I guess uh, you know we'll be talking about iOS 11 as well as uh, yeah, iPhone 8 and everything. Sounds really great, and it's so nice to be involved in the podcasting network. I have so many uh, friends that I follow, and uh, you, Pete Lane, Jeff Thompson, uh, or is it Thomas? No, it's <laughs> Just kidding, Jeff. So many people that I that I really admire for keeping the podcast going, and I'm happy to be part of the group. Brian Fischler. Well, you might want to include him in there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say you. <laughs> uh, I did not cry. Yeah, I think it's funny when you talk to someone and, and they'll say like, uh, oh, do you know the podcaster like Brian Fischler or something? You know, whoever the name might be. And I'll go, yeah, well, what's he really like? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to know. He's mad, bad, and dangerous to know. Pleasure to be here. Great having you, Randy. For now, we are out. Cool. I'll talk to you soon. See you, see you later, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, Fanny. <laughs> okay, bye. bye. 
That Line Tech Show with Brian Fischler. That Line Tech Show. When we share what we see through each other's eyes, eyes, we can then then begin begin to bridge bridge the the gap between between the limited expectations and the reality reality of of blind abilities. abilities. For more podcasts with a blindness perspective, check us out on the web at www.blindabilities.com. On Twitter at BlindAbilities, download our app from the App Store, BlindAbilities, that's two words, or send us an email at info at blindabilities.com. Thanks for listening.